Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for our very first Muse Letter. A lot has been happening over the past couple months, and so we wanted to find a way to stay in touch with all those who have been supporting our mission and programs. Thus, we came up with this format of virtual Muse Letters for you to learn about our growing programs, for you to meet some of our roster of artists and participating healthcare staff, and also for you to enjoy some of the music we've been sharing with patients across the country. Since the first virtual bedside concert for a COVID patient in New York Presbyterian Hospital on April 7th, and the release of the New York Times article documenting the founding and growth of this program through Dr. Rachel Easterwood, we've launched programs in New York Presbyterian, the University of California, San Francisco, Wyckoff Heights Medical Center, the University of Michigan, and in collaboration with our new musical partners, Salestina, the American Modern Opera Company, Harvard Medical School, Chamber Music Society, and Music Care, Musicians United for Service and Care. We've also launched programs at Houston Methodist, UCLA, Massachusetts General Hospital, and Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital. Through these programs, we've been able to offer over 75 concert sessions, many of which have consisted of three or more one-on-one -on -one virtual concerts for hospitalized patients. We're also in the process of launching our programs at dozens of other hospitals around the U.S. We have also been totally floored by the hundreds of musicians of all ages and also organizations globally reaching out asking for advice on how to launch similar programs in their own communities. If you're interested in launching a program of your own, we've made the blueprints for these programs available online at pmhu.org. And please feel free to get in touch with us directly if we can help answer any questions you might have. For each of our Muse letters, we plan to feature one artist or participating healthcare staff member. And for today's episode, we're very excited to have Dr. Rachel Easterwood. To be in one of the COVID patient's shoes, to me seems horrifying. They have an illness that we don't fully understand yet. They're alone, they're short of breath, I can only imagine how scary it must be. That's part of the reason why we're just trying to do everything we can to support the patients, both medically and, I guess, spiritually. This strange overlap just happened between my two different lives of music and medicine, and they've come together in some unexpected and beautiful way. Hi, Andrew, how are you? Hey, Rachel, I'm fine, how are you? There are very few things in this world where you can kind of transcend time and your place. And I definitely know that music is one of those things. It adds a level of humanity to the situation that I think this virus has taken away. The atmosphere on the shifts where I'm working, it's impossible to describe. We've been seeing a lot of difficult deaths, and that's throughout New York City. I think a lot of doctors that I've talked to have expressed the same sentiment that we aren't helping enough. There's a pianist, a violist, and a cellist that are in the same place. And there's a cellist on the West Coast. And they actually already had sort of a project going on where they play for more vulnerable populations. And were very interested in helping with the patients that I was seeing. I just had this phone call with Rachel. She mentioned that wouldn't it be incredible if, if the COVID patients who were more isolated from their family and friends than ever could experience this. FaceTime concerts for COVID patients. And it, it suddenly clicked that we could provide that. Hey, Rachel. Hey, guys. Thank you so much. How are you? We get a call from Rachel on FaceTime. I'm going to put the um, phone down like on the table, and then you guys can go, OK? Okay. Okay, great. great. Thank, you. Thank you. And she says, okay, guys, you're on. And just, we play. It, 
it's not silence on the other side of the call. It's a lot of noise. It's a lot of beeping from the machines. Typically, you can hear the ventilator breathing for the patient. It takes us in a way like, boom, we're right in the front lines. This is how we can hold their hands right now. It's blue music. Every time we get off the phone, there's a bit of um, a different atmosphere in this house. I started off studying to be a classical musician. So to be able to bring music into the hospital, I really never thought that would happen. The first concert was for a patient that had really no ability to interact. We had talked to the family and I was standing there next to this COVID patient. It was so surreal, but I just felt like at that moment in time in my life that Everything I, have, I had done up until that point had led me to that. And I think everybody was really feeling their own mortality. And I thought to myself at that time, if I don't make it through this, then I've done what I'm supposed to do. At my hospital, we're all a family, and I think that it actually helps not only the patients, but also the morale of the doctors and nurses. I hope that this music for patients brings them a sense of comfort that's definitely lacking. I hope these concerts can ease the pain a bit, and I hope that it can give them hope. So, hi, Rachel. Thank you. Hi, Emily. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, yeah thank you so much for being here and for all that you are and have been doing for Project Music Heals Us and so many patients and um, nursing and, and doctors and staff um, everywhere. I'm not doing very well in talking like this, so I'm just going <laughs> to launch in a question. <laughs> so, what went into your decision? to originally go into music? Going into music was really easy. My family is a family of musicians, so it was kind of um, a no-brainer. And I played the piano growing up since I was about four. Um, and then I started clarinet when I was maybe 11, kind of late actually. I kind of used music to travel at a young age, like mu music festivals, competitions, and it ultimately took me to New York, and that's where I've been ever since, pretty much. We we met like a long time ago playing the the Marcus Paus piano yes, quartet. Great piece. Great yeah, piece. really, and and I know we're we're still both friends with him on on Facebook, yeah. and I I get to see what he's been up to recently. No, I know we were talking about Marcus, this, like, how are you? Yeah, hey Marcus, what's up? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just been it, it was it was so interesting for me that like when when you graduated um that you decided that you you had another calling because i think a lot of musicians feel the same way like they they find themselves passionate about their their music they also many of them have other passions um yeah. but there are few who actually like pursue a completely other um passion that they have and i i i've always been curious about what went into that decision and if that was a difficult decision i mean there are a lot of factors that were in play at that time of my life. But I think that um, a lot of musicians, or most musicians, are very empathetic, compassionate, emotional people, um, whether on the surface or underneath. But I think that lends itself well to medicine, as we've seen here, or being in medicine or helping others in some other way other than music. Um, so for me, I was a little bit, um, I don't want to say antsy, but I just didn't feel that music was quite the right place for me. And I 
miss science and I miss math from not having that in conservatory. Um, so I kind of just explored that for a bit and it led me ultimately to medicine. I didn't know if I was going to be a nurse, a physician assistant or a physician. Um, ultimately the least amount of prerequisites were physicians. <laughs> they were the hardest ones, but really least amount and least amount of time. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Right. I didn't know that. I wanted to do surgery initially because um, you work with your hands. It kind of melds well with the music. Um, but you kind of evolve the conversation you, you're having with yourself and what you really want out of your life. And I think that for me, I was a little too like sensitive and compassionate, <laughs> to be honest, um, to be a surgeon. And, I mean, they're great, but it, it just wasn't me. And um, sort of evolved into what I'm doing now in the ICU. Yeah, can you can you kind of describe for for people who don't know what what a, an attending physician at a hospital like does in in the course of their their care for patients? Sure. So it really varies depending on what specialty you're in. Um, for me, I work primarily in the ICU, although I do work on the floors quite often as well, which means non critically ill patients. Um, but in the ICU, I cover at night, so I go in around eight p.m. Um, I get sign out, which is basically the other doctors from the day giving me information about the patients in the ICU, vitals like the blood pressure, the heart rate, oxygen levels, especially now in COVID times, and you know what to look out for overnight. You kind of get to know the patients um, as much as you can, and then they leave, and you're there with um, for me an intern, and. Overnight, you try to teach the intern procedures, um, central lines, um, that sort of thing, and take care of the patients, kind of put out fires overnight. Um, it can be really quiet or it can be really, really busy. Um, needless to say, it's been very, very busy recently. Um, it's slowed down quite a bit, though, in the past days. Have you ever regretted making, have, doing the choice of, of leaving music? Yeah, no, I've never regretted it. I mean, I've thought back to music, but I think I made the right decision for myself. Um, I'm glad to have music in my life, and I, it's a huge part of my life. It's a really big part of my life. After med school, it was really hard to keep up um, an internship and residency, um, but now I'm kind of coming back to it a bit, which has been very lovely. Um, more piano than anything because you can just sit down at the piano after you know you can eat a full meal and not feel terrible not feel too bad to you know it would feel too full and disgusting to play my clarinet I can't do that it's just you know, I have to find a read I have to find you know it just it doesn't happen so uh, I think I've come full circle I kind of put it down for a while and now I'm discovering it again yeah, I think I think a lot of musicians these days um, kind of in the middle of quarantine are starting to get their first taste of having not played for a couple of weeks, like just, oh my, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. Like you're playing backwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can feel every little muscle not working correctly. Right, exactly. And now we would like to share with you our first musical selection of this Muse letter. It is a piece written for viola and piano by Rebecca Clark and it's called Morpheus. One of the silver linings of this past couple months has been getting stuck in a house with a pianist. Um, and so we've been having a bit of fun being forced to explore and learn new repertoire. Again, the piece was written by Rebecca Clark, um, who happens to be one of my heroines, um, as she was one of the very first female professional violists in the world. And the piece Morpheus, references the Greek god of dreams and thus we have thought it was a fitting piece to play in a number of our virtual concerts um, as we played for unconscious patients hoping to calm their breathing and relax them as we play. So without further ado this is the Karpetrova duo playing Rebecca Clark Morpheus.
this New York Times article that came out um, talked about what you've been doing in COVID times. And um, of course, anytime, anytime I watch this, it's been, I guess, over a month now, and I've seen it a number of times. And every single time I watch it, I break down and cry. Um, and we're just so grateful for all that you've been doing and all, um, all that you are and all that you continue to do for these programs. Um, and so I wanted to just ask you kind of your side of things, your um, backstory to this. Um, the first question we have is, can you speak more about what inspired you to start these programs in New York Presbyterian? Of course, first of all, thank you, Molly. Thank you, Andrew, um, for having me on this program. It's special to be able to reflect on what happened um, just a few weeks ago. So um, I think this, this idea came about as a product of desperation, um, to put it simply. Um, I think it's pretty clear that as doctors, we want to help people. And it's also pretty clear that we weren't helping enough, um, as I as I mentioned. One of the things that, that struck me as these programs have, have started in other hospitals is how like incredibly quickly you were able to make this happen. The kind of speed at which you were able to, to work up the, the chain of command and get the, get the right protocols in place for it. I mean, that, that was so, it was impressive to me then. And after having, you know, set it up at multiple other institutions now, um, I come back to it and be like, how how on earth did she do that? And so, like, my question is, how on earth did you do that? Um, I did it because I have great people that I work with. And my boss is amazing, Dr. Sarjanovic. Um, Michael Robbins helped um, in the ER. And I just have great people that I work with. And we were all desperate, and we were all working as hard as we could to help patients. And really there it was not even a question with anyone that i spoke with it was just like obviously that's fine um, as long as hipaa is complied with then whatever you can do for the patients was kind of the rule already and that's what we did and what did you um from your side what did you see that the music brought to the environment and brought to the patients I'm thinking back to the, those initial concerts that really occurred at the peak of COVID at the Allen Hospital. Um, at the time, it seemed pretty special, but also not that, you know, unique. But looking back on it after a few weeks and kind of after coming out of this pandemic peak and plateau for that matter, um, it was pretty, a pretty incredible experience. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what the patients were feeling and I don't know if it was helping, but even for me being in the room with the patient, thinking that I was helping helped me. So, um, because a lot of the patients we couldn't help in any way. So just thinking that I could help in one moment helped me. Not to be selfish about it, but I think all of us as physicians and nurses and healthcare people, we really needed to feel like we were needed. Can I ask you also, um, if you have, because you've done a number of these concerts um, at this point, was there any point or any experience, any memory that sticks out as like, yeah, that it just stayed with you? I think... I remember all of the concerts um, somehow, uh, but the first one, I mean, a lot of them stick with me, but I think the first one right now, at least is kind of poking out, but um, I keep referencing it. So, it, you know, it was a patient that had a non-rebreather on, which basically is this mask, providing as much oxygen as we can really at that time for COVID patients. Um, and they couldn't talk. Um, but I remember like being in the room, it was one of the first patients as I said, and I had my PPE on. It was one of the first times I had to wear it. And I'm hoping that I have it on correctly. I'm staying in the room for longer than I'm, I'm used to um, next to a patient that I know is greatly infectious or I think is. Um, 
but then the music started playing and I was looking out of the window while I was playing of the, the patient's room and the sun just started shining at that time through the window <laughs> and it was really a beautiful moment hearing the music looking out of the window and being with the patient even though everyone else was afraid and I think and I was very afraid um, but I remember that moment very well yeah so now that you've been working with with musicians kind of playing in this one-on-one -on -one, uh, fashion for, for patients and making that connection. Um, do you see a place for this um, in medicine or rehabilitation um, past when COVID passes um, and, and the quarantines end and we can go back to some semblance of normal? So I think it's a two-part answer. I would say, yes, I can definitely see it happening post-COVID. I would like to say, however, that the circumstances that brought the music into the hospital with the COVID patients have changed drastically. Um, the patients, I mean, I think the inspiration that I had at that time, it was just so desperate and so many people were dying alone and so many people were lonely and just suffering. I mean, I think there are obviously patients like that in the hospital at any given time. We just have to identify them and be aware of that. And I think as a second part of my answer, that definitely, yes, I think that there's a place. Um, so um, yeah, I think, I think it's a great development and I think that maybe it's something good that came out of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been, it's been really great talking to you. Thank, thank you so much for everything and thanks for taking the time today. And um, it's, it's really, it's great to see you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Molly. Good to see you. Talk yeah. To you. One of the most beautiful pieces of music written for the cello is from French composer Camille Sasson and his orchestral tone poem, Carnival of the Animals. In it, each orchestral instrument becomes a representation of a living animal. And in the case of the cello, that animal is the swan. The composer's melancholy melody has inspired generations of cellists to mine the depths of their emotion and to reproduce this haunting, slow strain. And it has been a staple of my and other cellist offerings in these digital concerts. So we want to leave you with this today. We hope you enjoyed today's program and we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks for our next newsletter. Thank you so much. <laughs>